turtle absolutely flies this thing. Now am I going to high side this? Is the back going to step out on me? I wouldn't say no to some decent ABS on this bike. I don't think anyone can argue that ABS isn't a good thing. Yesterday I put up a little poll on YouTube, don't know if you saw it, about what video I should record today. There was two options, an update on the GSXR, how I'm getting on with it, what I've done to it since the last video. And the other option was to test the H2 and see how the comfort modifications are on the road and what I think to it. Has it improved the comfort, basically? Well, as you can see, there was a massive response to find out an update on the GSXR. So here we are. Today, I'm going to take you out for a little bit of a spin on the bike. I've ridden it now a good couple of times since the last video. We've got some decent dry weather at last. We've, we're into the teens of the temperature. I've got the brand new Dunlop Sportsmart TTs on, which are the same tyres I had on the S1000RR and loved them, but didn't get a chance to use them properly because the bike had to go back. But let's walk you through it. I've noticed a few little things about it. I'm starting to know the bike a little bit more. So join me for a little thrash around the countryside on this lovely spring morning. And I'll tell you all about the GSXR, what my plans are, how it's been, what needs fixing, what jobs I've got to do, and what my future plans are for the rest of the year with this bike. So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cup of tea, make yourself comfortable, and Chopsy, roll it intro. So I've had the GSX-R for, well I've actually owned it probably for about three months now, four months. This is my fourth ride. Last time I rode it, when I brought the camera along, you know, it, I, I was just trying it out for the first time. We had the old 10 year old tyres on it, so I couldn't give it any beanage, you know, not couldn't throw it around much because it had old tyres and there's no way I was doing that. Now I've got the Dunlops on, the Dunlop Sportsmark TTs were fitted yesterday or two days ago i went out last night just to give them a bit of an initial bed in so they've had a heat cycle they're bedded in now so i could start to lean on them a bit now look at this weather look at this weather i can't believe it the spring seems to have sprung i think the weather's meant to change a bit next week but at the moment the weather is just so beautiful there's so many bikes out i love this time of year at this time of year there's just so much you know, there's lots of anticipation for the year ahead, you know, the riding year ahead I'm talking about. I just find it really, really nice. What, what I love is when you, you get the crop fields, you get the rape, you get the rape in the fields, you've got that yellow rape covering the landscape, and that is, that rape to me is just, just spring. You know, that is just spring, it's beautiful. Right, we're going to go straight on here, we've got to watch this guy here, I need to let him know what I'm going to do, stay there, mate. On the bike, what have I done? I've changed the tyres and I've changed the oil. You know, you saw the video, hopefully, where I tried to fix the brake judder. I'll put a link to it at the top. I fixed the brake judder to a degree. It no longer judders like it used to. It's not perfect, though. It's not perfect. If you're very, very hard on the, the brakes, it's got more of a high-frequency judder before it had quite a low frequency, even on sort of moderate lever pressure, it would really vibrate quite aggressively. Doesn't do that anymore. But if you're on the brakes hard, it's got more of a high frequency judder sometimes. And now I think maybe the diff, one of the discs could be warped and that's the reason for it, but it's not perfect. And the that, that is my biggest criticism of this bike. If you're comparing this bike to a modern sports bike, one of the biggest things about it is, is the front brake setup. The rear is fine, <laughs> the rear is very good, but the front is just not up to the standard of a modern bike. And this bike has 14,000 miles on it, you know, it's 12 years old, is it? 14 years old? And even when these were new, they were never renowned for being much of a brake setup. It's exactly stock, it's got even got the rubber line, so I'm going to try and upgrade the brake system. Now, whether I need new discs, whether I do have a warp disc, it's possible, but I'm probably going to replace the disc. I'm going to start by changing the brake lines um, to braided ones. I'm going to also potentially change the brake pads because the brakes, 
they've got a lack of feel you know they're, they're a bit wooden and you pull the lever and it, there's, it doesn't do much I like a, I, I prefer my brakes to have more initial bites than that so I could probably change the pads and I can bring back a lot more feel to the brakes but I think braided lines potentially new the only reason I say potentially new pads is because I may change the calipers so I don't want to buy brake pads for these calipers and then I'd have to change the calipers so I don't know exactly what to do with the brakes yet but it definitely needs something doing I wouldn't want to take it on track with this setup I think it would well it would be hopeless I think it'd be pretty hopeless on track if I'm honest even on sort of fast road riding you, you come into the you know, you're noticing the limitations of the braking with that tire change it's actually I've got a different profile to the rear tire so this is the, the Dunlop Sportsmark TTs but they're a 55 profile which actually pushes the rear of the bike slightly higher and puts a little bit more weight onto the nose of the bike because when I first rode this it, you know it didn't change direction that brilliantly and also I've noticed when I've done the tyre change and I've had the wheels out that the uh, what's this guy doing that the uh, the wheels are so heavy on this bike compared to a modern bike the wheels weigh an absolute ton so that's not going to help with sort of direction changes so I was actually wondering whether the new GSX-R1000 wheels would fit on this model you know and you could actually put the late a cheap way of getting a good performance upgrade would be to change the wheels for some more modern wheels because more the modern the modern manufacturing processes for cast alloy wheels they've really reduced the weight of them and they're much lighter now super duke so I'm thinking maybe the modern GSX-R wheels maybe try and get some on eBay or potentially I do really if, if money's no no object I really like the Dimag cast not cast billet wheels they do the billet Dimags and they do those in this sort of matching Suzuki blue as well they would look beautiful on there and really I think I mean you check now the tyre change as I say it's definitely better from a direction change but I think just to finish it off would be to change the wheels but I mean this is a this is you know a sort of a budget bike now this is a six grand motorcycle if you start putting Dimags on it and replacing the whole brake system you know you're going to be pushing the, the value of this bike right up and that sort of becomes point you know not the point of this machine the point of this machine is to have a really well set up bike but on a budget you know and that's what I want to try and achieve with this so bolting on carbon wheels Dimags you know Stylema brake systems and spending thousands of thousands of pounds on it isn't really what it's about but I'm not saying I'm not going to do that <laughs> I may end up doing that I do still have plans I've got the link pipe I've got the arrow link pipe I mentioned before I was going to get this flash mapped because people have said in the comments and thanks for all the feedback from everybody about things to do to this bike to fix its issues you know a lot of people are saying put R1 calipers on it and braided lines will sort it right out so there's a lot of advice coming from people and, and that's really appreciated though keep that coming I, I am listening but I'm going to also get it mapped now I was going to get it flashed but the guy I want to use Chris at CJS Racing he's having a baby and he's taking the whole of April off and it won't that won't be able to I won't be able to do that until May end of May and I want to get it done before then because I find the it's a little bit flat in the mid-range compared to like modern straight fours so and I think this is the first GSX-R which had a cat on it and lambda sensors you know the first of the Euro 3 bikes so it's got a little bit of those Euro restrictions and some people have said it also has a uh, like a torque limiter for the first three gears so now I'm thinking obviously with a flash map where you adjust the ECU they could take away any sort of torque limiter on the bike but now I'm thinking maybe just power command of the bike and depending how they've implemented this torque limiter it could just be they've you know they've retarded the ignition slightly or or something to to create and limit the torque in the first three gears well you can actually override that with a power command you can adjust ignition per map with a power commander so I'm speaking to Dyna yet so, so if I get a power command I can do it myself you know this bike is really well known from a map perspective you know and because these arrow cans these twin arrows came with the bike when they were new and you know, it was an option from Suzuki I'm sure there'll be plenty of maps out there already with the link piece and these pipes so maybe stick a K and N filter on it as well just to get a bit more air in you know and I'm sure there'll be maps readily available off the shelf 
and if I want to go further I can then get it custom mapped but I'm thinking do that and that's a very easy way whereby I can uh, you know fit, fit the link pipe and sort the fueling and I'm sure that'll bring more mid-range punch Here she is, the GSXR. I'm absolutely loving this bike. Every time I ride it, the more I love it. I'm sort of falling for its charm and character. If you remember, the seller also said he'd changed, put new pads in the bike. He hadn't, they're the old pads. He also said he'd serviced it. Well, he had serviced it. The oil which I drained out of it was clean, was fresh, but because I didn't know what oil he'd put in it, I thought it was wise to do an oil change. So I've put in some decent silkaline um, oil in here now. I think it was the Pro 4. I put in fully synthetic, really nice oil. So now I can take it on track, thrash the bike with, you know, knowing it's protected with really top quality oil. Another thing I'm struggling a bit on the comfort perspective is actually getting the brake lever low enough so it's in line with my arm. So when I'm riding the bike, you, you don't want to be reaching up for the brake lever or reaching down for the brake lever. It wants to be level with your arm. And I've dropped the lever a little bit, but still it's not quite in line with where my arm sits. So I want to try and move the lever down a little bit more, but it's hitting on the throttle cables. So when I get the quick action throttle, which I'm going to do, I'm going to try and position the throttle so I can drop the whole bar, drop the whole lever position down a bit just to improve the comfort. So I'm getting a little bit of tension in my hands, but I'm not quite braking in the right position. So that's a little comfort adjustment I want to make. Another issue I found is it's not registering neutral on the, you know, the, the neutral light. So if I want to warm the bike up in the morning, it thinks, it thinks that, you know, if the stand's down, it thinks it's in gear, so it won't start and won't run. So I've got to play with the new, it could just be the switch on the side stand. It seems to be getting worse. Sometimes it's all right, and it's sort of getting worse. So I think it's possibly just a switch issue. I'll, I'll clean the switch contacts out, clean out, you know, where it adjusts and sits on the side stand. It might be gunked up, but I've got, that's a little job. I've got to sort out. I'm not entirely sure the suspension is set absolutely perfectly. I know the suspension's not fantastic. I know the rear shock isn't fantastic on these standard. And I think I may, it may benefit from a bit of a suspension setup. Now I may have a little play, play around with that myself or I may take it to a professional. Another thing on the comfort, these rear sets have got two positions. I can see my, my bike is set with the pegs in the higher position out of the two. And I think I'm gonna drop that down to the lower position because after a little while, get a little bit of tension in your knees and it could be a little bit more comfortable. It's pretty comfortable on the pegs, but I've got the option to drop the pegs a little bit more and make it even more comfortable. So why wouldn't you? But that's about it so far for little jobs I want to do to the bike. But I'm just really loving the look of this. I just really like the style of it. I like the fact that it's a bit raw, doesn't have any of those electronics. You can do what you want with it. Um, I think these sorts of analog bikes are making a bit of a comeback at the moment. The interest I've had from people, you know, about this bike, there's definitely something about bikes of this age that attracts people. Obviously they're cheaper, which is a big thing. You know, you don't have to PCP, you can just buy them. And they are still pretty darn close to modern sports bikes. So uh, let's jump back on. So yeah, a few little jobs planned for the GSX-R still. There's also a few little maintenance jobs I've realized that need doing. Um, I think it's all part and parcel with having an older bike, isn't it? The, if you're having an older bike, you're going to have to resign to the fact that you're going to have to tinker a little bit with it. And I don't mind that. I love tinkering with it. That's almost when you buy a new bike, it's almost like, well, I've got nothing to do to it. You know, you, you've got nothing to do to it apart from do mods. So you end up going down the mod route because you want to work on your bike. But actually, I find actually tinkering mechanically really good fun as well. <laughs> oh, it sounds nice as well. With that link pipe, it's going to sound even even better, isn't it? But I, yeah, I enjoy just tinkering with the bike and, and playing around with it, fixing little things, doing maintenance. This bike's got 14,000 miles on it, and you're meant to do a valve check at 14,000 miles, so I'm going to check the valves. I don't think there's anything wrong with them because normally if the valves are in need of adjustment it would sound a little bit tappity a little bit rattly and it doesn't so i think it's fine but i'm going to check them i'm going to do just a you know a, so i'll probably do a video on how to check your valves 
on a straight four. So that's another little job coming. Woo! And of course the uh, <laughs> power commander. I'll do it when I do the power commander while the tank's off and everything. I'll do all that in one shot. But yeah. So I love to tinker almost as much as I love to ride. Still absolutely flies this thing. Top end performance is fine and I'm not after more top end. I think these are 175 horsepower at the crank, so let's say 150-ish at the wheel. It doesn't sound a lot compared to modern bikes, but when I wind it up like that, it gets it, get it past 8,000 revs and it really goes, really goes. You don't need more than that. What it does need is a bit more torque in the gears, a bit more pull in the mid-range. That's what it's lacking and that's why I want to power commander it. And people are telling me that's because it's got the cat on this version. <laughs> All those brakes, just, they just don't feel nice when you're on them, especially on uneven ground. It doesn't quite handle as well as the S1000RR. I know I've been spoiled with the S1000RR. I mean, that is an incredible motorcycle. But it's not just that. It doesn't handle quite as well as the Speed RR I was riding. You know, modern bikes, they feel a little bit better set up, maybe. I don't know whether it's the quality of the components on here. But if I'm going for a set of corners, it doesn't transition as well between the bends. It sort of gets a little bit unsettled, I'd say, compared to, you know, a really well set up modern bike, you know, with the electronic suspension, which is adjusting everything. You know, it's not as quick. I'm not as fast on this as what I would be on this as a double R, absolutely. And I think that's probably due to suspension setup. The rear shock on these are meant to be pretty poor. But I know this is as is, I've not played around with the suspension, I've not done anything, so perhaps uh, you know, a professional setup would help with that. But uh, yeah, it's not quite, <laughs> it's, it's hard to put my finger on, I can't tell you, you know, it's because the rebound feels a bit hard. I, I can't tell you what it is, but I can, all I know is it's taken me longer to get used to you know, how it feels for a set of twisties. I think the more time I ride, spend with it, the better it is. But if I get on a new bike, it'll be straight away. It's a place to stop, isn't it? It does worry me a little bit coming when I'm used to riding modern bikes with modern electronics. I'm not, you know, the middleweight's fine, you know, you don't need electronics really on the middleweights. But on the thousands, I oh, shifted a little, on the thousands, coming you know, away and not having electronics, when you've been used to riding with electronics, it's a little bit worrying. You think, hang on, now I'm not going to high side this, is the back going to step out on me? And I think, you know, you, you could put decent rubber on, obviously, to minimise all that. But, I mean, I rode bikes without electronics for years and years and years. And uh, I think you just got to get that initial confidence back. That it's not going to do that. You know, and just bring back your natural skills. You know, but yeah, it's a little bit of a worry at first. You think, oh God, I've got no safety net. It's just me here. <laughs> but, you know, it's fine says that now. I might be an edge in a minute. ABS is a fantastic invention if it works well. I wouldn't say no to some decent ABS on this bike. I don't think anyone can argue that ABS isn't a good thing. What I don't like is electronics when they just nanny you. Too nannying. The electronics on a sports bike should be, you shouldn't know you've got them. They should just be in the background doing their thing and you shouldn't know you've got them. You know, if you want to have a bit of fun and you want to do a wheelie or turn them off for whatever reason, it should be easy to do that. And unfortunately, not all bikes are like that. 
and it is quite nice just to ride this knowing you've got none of that just do your thing just ride it a bit more mid-range you see it's a little bit flat in that mid-range there see a little bit of juddering then yeah i don't think that juddering's fixed you know it's better it's not fixed I've also got some other rather exciting news some of you may have seen I posted up on Instagram if you don't follow me on Instagram I'll put a link here fine get on Instagram I put a lot of pictures up there you see what bikes I've got coming so if you don't follow me on Instagram pop over and follow me on there because you get a lot of, sort of inside information about what's coming because you see me post up pictures of the bikes I'm riding but I mentioned on there that uh, I'm house hunting we're actually well we sold the house I sold my house and we've found a new house not new it's, I think it's about 10 years old but it's got a double garage a double garage a big double garage so I've outgrown my little this is one of the reasons for moving basically I want I want a big garage with a house attached <laughs> Mrs Chops has got other ideas of course but that's my prerequisite it's a big garage with a house attached so I can do much more in the garage and unfortunately that that, that has slow it that is slowing the hypermotar project because I, I can't start that I haven't got with my three bikes in there and the hypermotar to put together I haven't got room even without any loan bikes I'm running up really low on space even doing maintenance on this it's tight in the garage so we're moving we're just waiting for the person to accept the offer on the new house and probably two to three months time we're moving to the new place and it's a big double garage I'm gonna kit it all out it's got an electric garage door ready <laughs> but I'm going to plaster it all I'm going to make it the ultimate garage workshop that's the plan so I may even do a series on uh, the ultimate garage build um, you know I want to get some lovely lighting in there and it's going to be like a little studio as well so I'm, I'm really rather excited about the house move and I'm so excited about the double garage so I mean it may all fall through and I may end up with a bigger single garage but this one has a double garage and I'm making plans in my head already. Double bubble garage. So that is it really for the GSXR where we're up to at the moment. As I say, I'm absolutely loving it. I want to get it on track. I will be doing some track days. I'll be booking some track days. I'm actually, I'm hoping to do a two day Cadwell Park track day. And I've managed to get my hands on the new Super Duke with the electronic suspension is it the SC version I can't remember what is it the SC the one with the electronic suspension I'm hopefully taking that on a track day at Cadwell Park so I probably won't take this round Cadwell Park I'll take the SMCR and the Super Duke to Cadwell Park for a two day track event so I'm hoping that comes together um, I've also got the Norden coming next month to try I would take that on a bit of a trip well UK based long day out you know that type of review I've got the new Super Duke which I mentioned um, I want to get on the V2 Street Fighter some comparisons planned with Greg I want to do a comparison perhaps between that new Speed RR and uh, maybe I don't know what to compare it to the Super Veloce MV maybe I like the look of that new MV F800 uh, is it the F800 now, the F4? Love the look of that. I want to get on that. I love MVs now. I think MVs is the biggest surprise. The, the MVs I rode last year, I love them. So there we go. If you've enjoyed it, please give me a like. If you haven't already seen or subscribed to my channel, click on the subscribe button. There's so much good content this year. You won't regret it. I promise you won't regret it. All sorts going on. All sorts of bike content, not just new stuff comparisons and everything I've mentioned so if that's of interest click the subscribe button if you like the video click the like button it makes a massive difference so I'm almost at 90,000 subscribers now another 10,000 to go and we're going to be at the 100,000 I'm I can't wait to get to 100,000 I've been doing this for eight years eight years of my life producing on average a video a week for eight years I think I've got over 500 videos in the back catalogue now. So, yeah, I'm really... That, that getting to 100,000 subscribers is a massive milestone. And I might get it just in time to hang that plaque on my new double carriage. <laughs> that YouTube, you've reached 100,000 subscribers plaque 
on the wall in my double garage. Ah, oh, you can make that happen. You can make my dreams come true by clicking that subscribe button. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, <laughs>